First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Mighty John, the record guy, is a uh, an amazing record expert. So if you have any vinyl, an album that you might think might have some value, he'll do a, a, an assessment of it right here um, on air. You just have to call in 315-736-0186. And uh, Mighty John Marshall is on the line now. John, good morning. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Good. A couple of uh, references here this morning that are, are going on. Um, uh, how about uh, Charlie Watts? That was very sad. That very sad. Really kind of makes you feel like, oh, I could go at any time now. I'm it, it does. And, you know, <laughs> then, whereas normally the band makes you feel um, somewhat inadequate as they're, you know, drumming right. away at age 80 on stage looking like 20-year-olds. Yes, absolutely. I mean, very it's, sad. it's crazy. Very, very sad. Uh, um, and I also, uh, I played a little something. I don't know if you've, you've heard this. Uh, that back in the 60s, 1964, the Rolling Stones sold out, um, is what I think they call it, sold out and did a Rice Krispies commercial. Did you know that? I did not know that. No. Uh, listen, to, <laughs> listen to this little piece they did for Rice Krispies. This only aired in the U.K., but uh, I think it would have done really well here. Check this out. Wake up in the morning, there's a snap around the place. Wake up in the morning, there's a crackle in your face. Wake up in the morning, there's a pop that really says life's business to you. And you, and you, for all the milk and listen to the sound that says... Anyway, it goes on. Um, uh, but uh, that's got a little ring to it. I, they should I, bring that back now. They, they, they should, and I wonder if they ever put that on vinyl. My guess is, I know of. is no, or yeah. or those do you, those records that would show up in like cereal boxes that are were just a, like a thin piece of plastic right. uh, that you could play. Did they ever have any value? Are there any of those out there? Yes, uh, they ruin your needle. Number yeah, one, yeah, they do. But, uh, yeah, uh, generally, the, I think there was uh, Jackson Five. I think Gary Lewis, the Playboys, the Monkeys were on the back. Uh, Generally, they sell up around twenty-five dollars. If you hadn't taken it off the back of the cereal box, up to fifty. If you hadn't opened the cereal box, up to a hundred. Okay, all right. And then uh, I thought it was interesting the uh, the Nirvana "Smells Like Teen Spirit" album. I saw uh, that. Yeah, if you read the uh, the the kid is now thirty years old. The the baby that was on the cover, exposing or being exposed, uh, he is now suing. Claiming that that was child porn. I don't know if you saw that. I did. I did. Uh, I, you know. I, 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 meanwhile, ten years ago, there when he was twenty, yeah, he was out trying to get people to send him money, and he was and he was signing the the album cover. Yeah, it's something cool to talk about, my yeah, friends. You yeah. know, if you want to send me a poster, one hundred and fifty dollars. That I, I, I that's was me. that yeah. kid. Yeah. Well, people say the same thing about the Blind Faith album with the little girl. Blind Faith is the next one I was going to. Uh, so yeah. it is interesting. What was okay back then? It's funny uh, that uh, we had a little get together last night, and we were going over the number of songs that oh, are yeah. about young girls. Everything from young girl uh, to all well, of these. You're six, uh, even Ringo you're 16, Star. Sixteen. All of these songs. Benny Mardonis. Benny Mardonis. She was just sixteen years old. Um, I mean, you think about all of these songs. Back then, it was okay to sing about an underage girl. It's kind of weird. Mm. Yep. Today, not so not so cool. Well, yeah. You, you got to be woke now, Bill. Yes, it's a yes, woke. Yeah. We are in a woke world. John, John's not touching that with a ten foot pole. By the way. <laughs> little, little rough to be woke at seven o'clock in the morning, but I'll try, it, John. <laughs> we will try. All right. What do we uh, What do we have today? What do you have for us? Well, I got a list of ten records to look for, worth up to a hundred twenty five dollars more each one of them, and some of these you might have have. And so, let's see. Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles, that 45 with its picture sleeve, currently up to $125. Brenda Lee had a lot of hits in the 50s and the 60s. She put out an album called All the Way, currently up to 125 Barbara Lewis, big hits in the 60s, one of her biggest, Baby, I'm Yours, the album up to 125 Look for the Turtles, big hit for them, Happy Together, mm. with its picture sleeve up to $200. 1981, Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons Reunited Live is the name of the album, currently up to 200 bucks. One Hit Wonders, The Cascades, Listen to the Rhythm of the Falling Rain. The album, oh, Mono, up to 75 bucks. Stereo copy can get you 400 Aaron Neville of the Neville Brothers, Tell It Like It Is. 
big hit for him. The value is for the album up to 500. First album for Kiss, if you have it. And it does have the song Kissin' Time on the record. No more than $20. But if the song Kissin' Time is not on your Kiss album, up to $750. Mm, okay. Uh, how, how come it wasn't on there? Well, you know, it, they didn't put it on there. Then they, the producer said, we want you to record the song Kissin' Time. They hated the song. They okay. finally recorded it. And then they put it on subsequent albums. And the rarity is, uh, is the reason for the value. Rarity adds to, well, Kiss is collectible, but Rarity really yeah. adds to the value itself. Kiss is really an unbelievable band when you, when yeah. you think about it. I mean, they're, they fill, uh, before COVID, they fill this cruise line every year, and they do a Kiss cruise. And all well, these we, people load onto the boat, and they go, uh, they go hang out with the members. We just had them in Maine up in Bangor. 10,000 people turned out about a week ago to see Kiss. Wow. Boy, they wow. had to feel I pretty good. They were st- I thought they were you know, calling it quits. Yeah, well, no. maybe it wasn't really them. Who can tell with all the makeup? That, that is true. And, true. <laughs> and listen, they all call it quits until the money quits, and then yeah. they're, <laughs> they're right back I in. I give up my publishing? What? Oh, back on tour. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that worth, uh, without kissing time, $750. Okay. Right. Got it. Adam West, who would have thunk Batman had a forty-five? <laughs> Shows his picture on the sleeve. It's called Miranda. And with the picture sleeve up to seventeen hundred dollars. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and number one on our list for the month, you gotta love it. Sonny Liston, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Up to two thousand mm. dollars. Wow. Uh and then you have uh you have a couple of a uh, couple of bonus uh, records for us? Well, there are categories that could be extremely collectible. Okay. Collectible. One is rockabilly, nineteen fifty eight Moon Mullins, rock and roll rhythm, twenty five hundred dollars. Another category that's very collectible, pre-war blues. Blues records that came out prior to World War II. Extremely yeah. collectible. Charlie Patton, 1930, Mean Black Cat Blues, $15,000. Wow. Jeez. And you know, I hate to say, but you, you, would nev- you never know when you go to some garage sale or something, and you see something like this, you think it's garbage, yep. and turns out to be a, a, a diamond in the rough, if you will. We find a lot of these at estate sales. So yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. those in mind as well. All right. Okay, I had a question, uh, somebody asking about the album Gone with the Wind, the original soundtrack album. Some soundtracks can be very collectible. Others, not so much. Gone with the Wind, uh, not a biggie, up to not about $25. So dollars. Okay, all right. Uh, Frank has a question. Do you, are you okay uh, for a few minutes? Sure. Uh, Frank, good morning. You're on with Mighty John, the record guy. And is this Frank? Did you say Frank? Yeah, Frank, that's you. Yeah. yeah. Hi, hey, uh, I have four album covers signed by Doris Day and one signed by the McGuire sisters. Mm. Are they worth anything? Well, uh, the, the autographs are probably worth more than their albums. However, an autograph on an album could actually hurt the value of the album. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because anytime you alter any t- type of collectible from the way it originally was released, yeah. you can hurt the value. Having said that, Maguire Sisters and Doris Day albums are generally in that $25 price range. Uh, so I think the autographs or the signatures in this case would be worth more. Also, how do we know Doris Day signed that? Right, so, right. A lot of fakes on the market. Of all the Beatles signatures on the market, over 50% are fakes. Wow. And how do you determine? Uh, uh, yeah, obviously, you have somebody who's a specialist with signatures. Yeah. You've got yep. to. I, I can't do it, but I mean, yep. certainly you have, yep. to have a, uh, a writing expert or an autograph. Yeah. Uh, All right, Frank. Thank you. We appreciate it. Good luck. You're welcome. Okay. So it sounded the... like Frank was throwing those albums out the window. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yes. Oh, darn it! <laughs> Thanks a yes. lot, Doris Day, or whoever uh, you are. He's getting rid of all of his disco records. He's <laughs> burning them in the backyard. Uh, and then Cordelia in Rome with a question three one five seven three six zero one eight six. Cordelia, you're on with Mighty John. Hello, Mighty John. I Hello. have a paper record of Rudy Valley with his picture on the back. Yes, well, you're going way back. You want to remember that just because a record is old doesn't mean that it's worth money. Mm-hmm. So Rudy Valley, even though he went to my alma mater, the University of Maine, and sang the Maine Stein song, yeah. he is not collectible. So certainly no more uh... than $25. 
All right. Well, I, I always wonder, you know, and you just kind of look at it and think, well, maybe, maybe not. But not, yeah. I guess I got to say Well, you can always put not. it up to bid on eBay or a place like that. And, see and you never works. know. Yeah, right. it's only as valuable as somebody's willing to somebody's pay for it. Somebody's willing to pay for yeah. it. Or well, you could you could put it in a frame, put it up on your wall, and say, this thing's worth a million dollars. I'll never sell. No yeah, one. Sure. Yeah, yeah. As long as as long as you don't as long as you don't invite John to your house, no one will ever know. That's right. so. Okay. Thank All right, you guys. Cordelia, thank Bye-bye. you. Uh, it's moneymusic.com. You know, it's John's the, uh, always so pleasant, even when giving the bad news. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, that's only $25. Well, I didn't realize your demo was so high, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's moneymusic.com. And, John, thank you so much. As always, uh, you're awesome. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. Thank Have you. Have a Bye-bye. great day. All right. Uh, Mighty John, the record guy. Money Music, if you reach out to him, he'll give you the uh, the value of but like if you had if you were going through records and you saw a record with the uh with Batman Adam West you you'd be like especially Adam this West. is junk <laughs> right this is junk right right and come to find out the records worth $1700 crazy yeah. right those are state sales 